Good morning. This is Terry with Paris Israel Church. And we're going to begin our Sunday school lesson. It's in James 1, 19 through 27. And as the past lessons have been, it uh, deals with wisdom. And we're talking about the wisdom that we need to eventually have eternal life with our Lord and Savior. And how do we gain wisdom? We got to read scripture and follow what the scripture tells us to do. And that's today's lesson is entitled Hearing and Doing. It's a very easy to just uh, listen to somebody talk and how many times do you communicate or talk to a neighbor or a friend or whatever and then maybe a half hour later you don't remember what even was said. Did you actually listen and take to heart what was being said or was you just trying to be polite and just being neighborly and listen but not really uh, absorb what they was trying to tell you. And that's where today's lesson is trying to say we got to go a little bit further than that. Just try to put up a show is not what Jesus is uh, is wanting. In James, as we had from uh, last week, uh, James is the half-brother of Jesus, and we figure it's one of the earliest uh, books of the New Testament that was written roughly around in the 50s A.D. Uh, before James' death in uh, 62 A.D. But uh, this is James uh, as being one of the disciples trying to tell the people, this is what you have to do. I've got to see Jesus firsthand, and this is what he has asked us to do. I've got a little paragraph here. It says, in an ancient world, it was common for people to hear and listen to the teacher. But if you follow the teacher and try to live what he said, you were called, were called a disciple of the teacher. So Jesus is looking for disciples, doers, not just hearers. And as you know, back then before the Bible was even written, a lot of them was teachers. They went around to spread the scripture of what Jesus wanted them to do. And what they wanted to do was try to bring people into the loving world of God and tell them the true meaning of living and do away with all the evil that was being done. And you just went around. You didn't have a book where we could read every day you know, scripture, you had teachers, and this is what they're trying to say, pass the word around, become the doers, and do the actual work that Jesus wants to be done. Okay, let's go into the hearing and doing. That's the title of today's lesson. It goes clear back uh, in the Genesis, you know, what did Adam and Eve, Jesus I mean, God had told them, <clears throat> you have this beautiful garden to live. The only thing I ask you to do is not to eat of the forbidden fruit. One thing to do, and what did they do? They didn't listen. They didn't obey God. They went and ate the uh, forbidden fruit and was cast out of the, the garden. Happened so many times. Just think of our everyday life. You know, some of us want to be on a, a diet. And what's some of the things they're supposed to do? Eat your fruits and vegetables, drink plenty of uh, water. Uh, you know, you're supposed to stay away from possibly ice cream and that double cheeseburg that has bacon on it with a side of fries. And why is it that that's the thing we want. because Is it because we're told that we can't have it or shouldn't have it? That our taste buds just can't wait to get into a cheeseburger? 
and we're not satisfied with our fruits and vegetables, even though it's supposed to be better for us. Go also going on to maybe smoking or drinking. You know, they tell us it's bad for us, but how many times you see people or ourselves, you know, alcohol or smoking, and it's it's bad for our bodies, but what do we do? We still do it. And it's not the godly thing to do. You know, we hear it, but we don't follow through on it. And this just goes into today's lesson. Verse 19, I'll read it. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. This is a ideal lesson just in this uh, one verse. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. It's just, like they say, it's, it's easier to be said than done. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32 kind of sums this up. Verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from, from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Repeat that last one again, as God in Christ forgave you. God forgive us for our sins. Why do we not be so hard that we can't forgive someone else for their sins? Our tongue gets us into problems way too many times when we get anger to take us, takes us over. Verse 20, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Have you ever been in or seen somebody that was totally lost it by being angry? Did anything good ever come out of that anger? It's not an element that God wants us to live by. We should be wise, patient, and discerning. We have to, you know, I got a rule of thumb, you know, uh, it's an old saying, if you don't have anything good to say about somebody, or something, it's better not to say anything at all. And that, to me, is scripture right there. Be patient. A lot of times you get angry or so upset about something that somebody maybe had said to you. Patience. Take the time. Pray about it. And maybe you would come up with an answer. A lot of times there's uh, the other side of the story. Why did that person become angry? Maybe he didn't know all the facts. He was hurt by something previous. And we shouldn't fight, fight back from just that. That's not the godly way uh, to do it. Verse 21. Therefore, get rid of all the moral filth and the evil, evil that is so prevalent. And hum, humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. So easily. Get rid of all the moral filth and evil. Evil thoughts, evil actions. You know, when I was a trustee of the township, <clears throat> you would have meetings and some would be come in and they were just so riled up, possibly before they even got the the, the meeting. And... A lot of times they just had to get something off their chest. You know, sometimes your voice would start to rise, you know, and they start to get a little out of hand and almost get loud. And what you have to try to do, maintain a soft voice. Don't try to talk above them. I've seen that happen too many times. It just becomes a shouting match and nothing is solved. Keep the love in your heart. And love will endure. The first couple of verses, it talks about listening to the word. And then the last two verses here is applying the word. 
That's as in verses 22, which I'll read. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. How easy is that? Don't just do something because you think it's the right thing to do. You go to church just because you feel good or you want to make a show. Uh, you put that offering into the, the plate that makes you feel good. What is the reason in you're doing it? You're there to be a disciple of God. You do it because you want to do it. You want to do it because you want to help others. Plain and simple. Our actions are the best indica indicators of the reality of our heart. Our heart. That's the reason we should do in a lot of our actions. Because of the love that's in our heart. Not for show. God knows if it's just for show. But when we do it with loving actions, that's the true love of God that he's trying to, to say. It's not just trying to give what we call uh, lip service. As it says, James says we must practice what we know if we are to be faithful to Christ. Practice what we know. We know it's what is right and wrong, but how many times we do the wrong instead of the right? That's not the way God wants us. Verse 23, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he, he looks like. I got an analogy where I try to, to make this maybe seem a little bit more understanding. Say if you was at somebody's house at a, a party and you've been eating and you, you go into the restroom and you look in the mirror and hear some ketchup that's on your, on your face. What action do you take? You, you take no action. You don't take that ketchup off. You just turn around and walk back out into the party with doing nothing. And this is what James is saying. Do it. And when you do it, do it for God's love. Have action. Don't just look into the mirror and then you walk away you forget what you look like. Back in their day, you know, a mirror was uh, polished uh, metal, what would be a doll mirror, not like what we have today, but they was looking to see what they look like. James is saying, if you look into the mirror and do nothing, you are not following God. How very, very true. Verse 25, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Wow. Intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. What is freedom? You know, we have this uh, today, you know, they talk about slavery. We had uh, Black Lives Matter and they went restitution for, you know, slavery. What is the slavery of sins? What's the best freedom? If we could be free of sin. This is what Jesus has, has said. If you want total freedom, you can have it. You can free yourself from the sins of everyday evils that surround us. It's always tempting us to do the wrong thing. But we can have that freedom and eternal life. Can we stay away from hate, greed, jealousy, pride, anger? Those are all attributes that we shouldn't have in our heart. As they say, it's easier said than done, but we got to start somewhere in some way. Go on. Verse 26, those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. As I said before, are you doing it for show? Or are you doing it for the love of God that you want to follow what he's trying to teach us? You know, do we give just for personal gain? You know, you give to the church or give to a nonprofit organization, you can write them off on your taxes. Is that the reason you give? Or do you give because you actually want to? You know, when I give something to somebody, 
It could be a person on the street. If it's a 10 or a $20 bill, I don't follow him around and see where he spent it. That's not up to me to judge. The Lord is going to judge him to what he had done with that money. If he was in need, he would use it the right way. If he didn't use it in the right way, God will be the judge on his judgment day. It's not for me to decide. It's not for us to, to decide. Verse 27. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being pulled, polluted by the world. Wow. Wow. What he's trying to say is take care of those that are in need. Back in Jesus' day, if you was a widow, there was no welfare that you could go and sign up for. You had no means to have an income if your husband had passed away. If you was an orphan, means you had no mother or father. There was nobody to take care of, care of you. Where, was, where were they going to be getting their food? They are to be taken care of. Those that have the means to do it should take care of those that do not have the means to get the food or the shelter or the water. We are to take care of them <clears throat> and to keep one from being polluted by the world. Wow. What I say is polluted by the world is all the evils that's always there to try to change our thought process that maybe we shouldn't do it. There's too much anger and hate that's gone on. We should be there to take care of those that is in need. How do we take care of those? That's up for each individual to decide. Whatever's in their heart, they might have different means on taking care of somebody. You know, you might have somebody that doesn't have a vehicle. They might need a ride to a, a doctor's appointment. Or if they don't have a vehicle, they might need a ride to a grocery store. Just simple things like that, that we can do to help out one another. This is what all Jesus is asking for. I wrote down here, being a religious person should be about loving God and loving people and having faith and putting it into action. Read your scripture, follow it, and above all, obey it. If we can do that, it would be a more loving earth and world, and then we can have eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this lesson to try to teach us about hearing and obeying. May you open our hearts that we would not harden them, for your scriptures so that we can understand the wisdoms you are trying to teach us so we can go out and love one another as you love us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And above all, we want to thank the Lord for the weather that we have. If you remember last weekend, we've got quite a bit of rain that we were in need of. I know us here at the orchard was blessed. We got about an inch and three quarter inches of rain in a couple of days. And uh, that's just one of the many blessings that we have to be thankful for. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a wonderful week. Blessed be to you. Thank you.